Welcome everyone, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, the show that brings you those really classy manual turntable intros. Anyway, we're diving back into some miniature sculpting here as I create a tabletop version of the Mongolian Death Worm, at least it's my interpretation of the famous cryptozoology creature. So if you like these kind of sculpting tutorials, hit that like button, open up Blender, and let's get to work. In general, the process of sculpting a miniature is a series of operations with an increasing focus on detail. In this case, I'm starting with the default cube and roughing out the shape of the death worm. This process includes using the extrude tool to add more faces as well as rotating and shaping the various vertices. As a note, I am working off a sketch I made a little while ago. I'm not going to perfectly stick this artwork, but I am using it as a guide for the final miniature. Through this rough process, I have only been working on half the worm. At this point, I am adding a mirror modifier to ensure the miniature will look symmetrical from left to right. To add a more organic look to my rough sketch 3D modeling thing that Jiga got going on here, I am adding a subdivision surface modifier. Afterwards though, I continue to work on the original mesh which allows me to add more details around the jaws without worrying about complex geometry just quite yet. The more rough detail I can bake into the model now, the better. Therefore, I start working on the rough shape of the chitin armor behind the head of the death worm. I'm only accomplishing this by working with the basic mesh that I've been using all along so far in the sculpting process. Now let's apply the subdivision surface modifier and this is the result we get. It looks a bit odd but this is caused by a common issue, this whole little weird groove thing we got running down the middle of the creature. When using the mirror modifier, each half of the miniature is a solid object. You've got basically all four faces enclosing it. This will cause the middle of the miniature to have a solid face to it and that is what causes this weird effect the subdivision surface modifier. What we need to do is take a step back, undo the subdivision surface modifier, then find all these faces in the middle of the miniature and delete them. Now we are starting the actual sculpting process. Start by applying all the modifiers, and then we want to use the remesh tool that is built into the sculpting tools to clean up our miniature a bit. For the next few steps, I am using the symmetry feature of the sculpt tools, and I'm also not using dynamic topology yet. To start out, I am just using the clay strips tool to get the basic shape of the miniature. Cleaning up this messiness involves using the smooth tool to blend these different strips together and get a nice, clean surface. When it comes to your interface for sculpting in Blender, I highly recommend some sort of tablet interface. I got your cheap basic Wacom tablet right here. That works really well. Or of course, if you got the money to spend on one of them really fancy touchscreen monitors with a pen input, that can work awesome as well. Now what I find, at least in my own personal experience, is that the pen interface gives you a lot more control and gives you a lot more natural feel to the sculpting process than trying to use a mouse. A mouse is relatively clunky. Plus, having the pressure sensitive input on the pen, Blender can tap into that for not only controlling the strength of the sculpting tool, but also the size of the tool that you're working with. So you get a lot more flexibility how you apply the various sculpting effects inside a Blender. When it comes to adding a clean edge to the detail, say around the raised sides or raised edges of the chitin armor, there are two sculpt tools to use, pinch and crease. Now the crease tool is used in the valleys of the detail, say where the chitin armor lines up with the body of the worm. The pinch tool is then used on the ridges of the detail. So this process of cleaning up the detail and adding a little more fine revision will come in after all the large details and large parts have been sorted out. It is important with miniatures that you need to make sure the detail more exaggerated than it would be in real life in order for it to be seen. A scale miniature of anything will actually really not look good when turned into a miniature without having its detail made more obvious. If you are new to miniature sculpting and will take a few tries to figure out just how large a detail should really be, 
I'm talking to you from the future now because I've got this miniature obviously done and printed out. And unfortunately some of the detail did come out a little bit small so I'm going to have to go back in and enlarge some things to make sure you can really see it, especially after you paint the miniature up. One way to give a detail a straighter edge is to use a different stroke method for a given sculpt tool. The default mode is space which kind of works like a normal paintbrush. However, using the line stroke will allow you to draw a clean straight line before the effect of the tool is applied. There are two important notes at this point during the sculpting process. First, at some point the existing structure of the miniature will no longer allow extra detail to be added. We need to turn on dynamic topology and set a really small detail size to add your detail. Dynamic topology allows Blender to automatically add more structure detail or basically more vertices to your miniature in order to give it the look you're trying to go for. Second, with this extra detail will definitely slow down your computer and potentially cause issues with 3D printing. At some point we're going to need to reduce this additional structure detail, get rid of some vertices, However, from this point on, do not use the remesh feature of Blender, as this will probably cause a lot of the detail you sculpted to be lost. Instead, we're going to use what's called the Decimate modifier. This modifier is generally better at removing excess vertices from areas of miniature where it is safe to do so. Of course, being too aggressive with the Decimate modifier can cause issues and, you know, destroy your miniature. But in general, it works better than the remesh feature for preserving fine detail. The clay strips tool is not only great for adding material, but it's also great for removing large amounts of material. Every sculpt tool in Blender has an opposite mode. This is controlled in the right hand tool settings under direction. For clay strips, by selecting subtract, it'll remove material instead of adding it. In this case, I am using it to add some definition to the mouth of the death worm. So far, we have only used several of the sculpting tools, but Blender has a bunch more. One of these tools, which is definitely a bit of a specific use case, is the snake hook tool. I'm going to use this to add some horns to the creature, which in my world is how the Mongolian death worm generates its really powerful electric shock that is known for having. However, the Mongolian deathworm does spend most of its time underground burrowing through sand. Therefore, it would seem that lots of small horns would break off over time. What I think would make sense in kind of a story perspective is that the worm can retract these horns into its armor when they're not needed. So I'm going ahead to add some detail around the horns to give that idea that the creature can retract them. The snake hook tool is also great for making monster teeth or really any kind of bang or sharp pointy objects to be honest with you. And like the horns you want to make the teeth larger than you think they should be in order for them to be visible in the final miniature and I'll tell you right now I did not do that. The teeth are barely visible in the mouth of my 3D printed miniature so I'm going to go back in, smooth this out and fix it later. With the chitin armor and the other banding and details of the miniature complete I wanted to add a faint pattern to the remaining skin areas. Blender lets you use images to create kind of custom, unique patterns with the brushes. So in this case, I'm opening up Photoshop to create a simple hex shape. Now creating brushes in Blender is a detailed topic in itself, and you can really go down a rabbit's hole if you want to. So if you're kind of new to this area, definitely look up more information about this process after this video. We can then use Blender's texture system, which is normally used to add really cool visual effects to 3D models to add this shape to the clay strips tool. Once we've done that, we can go over to our sculpting tools and select this texture to be used the clay strips brush. The important option right below that is we want to change the mapping option to view plane. This combined with dynamic topology will allow us to add hexagons all over the creature's skin. Now to get the various sizes of the hexes, zoom in and out with the camera and this will change the size of the hex relative to the size of the miniature. So at this point, I'm calling the first version of this miniature done. Reduce the vertex count down with the decimate modifier. Export it as an STL file, and then import it into your resin slicer program of choice. And that is about all I have for you today. 
Now, as I kind of hinted during the sculpting process, there are a few features of this miniature I want to go back and change. So I'll be working on a video for those updates at some point in the future. So with that, once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. Thanks for watching and have a great week.